I just want to bring Gordon into this. And Gordon, you've been listening in as well. And Ian was listing out a series of threats he sees, uh, not only to us here in the United Kingdom, but other allied countries as well. How big a threat do you think China is to the West? China is an existential threat to the West. Xi Jinping has been propagating this notion that China is the world's only sovereign state. Um, and, you know, you just go on from there. The problem is that when Cleverly goes to Beijing, the Chinese are going to view it as Britain acknowledging its supplicant status. And that's what they do with American officials. The Biden administration has sent four senior officials to China without a return visit from a Chinese official to Washington. So the Chinese say, well, look, this is like imperial times where the vassals come and they acknowledge their subordinate status. And I think that, yeah, engagement sounds like it should work. We've been trying it for five decades. It's just created this horrible situation. We got to try something new. Because if we don't try something new, things are just going to get worse. What now, I'm not of, saying that what? something new is going to be better, but at least it guarantees us, or at least it gives us the possibility of success, whereas engagement has totally, totally failed. So what other alternative uh, way are you proposing? Well, first of all, um, we're not going to send anybody to Beijing. If China wants to talk to us, they've got to come to Washington. And also, I think that if we don't talk, you know, China has this policy of not talking to Americans, for instance. Well, why don't we adopt the same thing? Just not talk to them. Let them get scared for a while. But also, I believe we need to decouple from China. China is um, closing itself off from the world. Xi Jinping is engaging in some very belligerent behavior. I think that, uh, as Ian Duncan Smith said, the Chinese economy is tumbling down. That makes Xi Jinping, I think, acting in ways which will be reckless. Mm -hmm. So we now need to switch to, uh, to change our emphasis from talking to China to starting to defend ourselves from China. Bethany, just uh, bring you in on that, the idea of decoupling and maybe just saying, look, if you want to speak to us, come to D.C. Does that work? Well, I don't think that works either. And to be clear, I think it's incredibly important that any kind of conversations, any kind of so-called engagement has to come with tough actions. And that's something that we are seeing from the Biden administration that, and that they're building on from the Trump administration. And that's something that increasingly we've seen from Britain. Although I will say in Britain's case, what we've had, I think, is a, a bad relationship with China. But as Ian laid out, not many actual strong moves to support democratic values. And so I think that there's an opening here for Sunak, uh, you know, to, um, to have a tougher policy on China and also talk to the Chinese and also go to Beijing, um, or, you know, as cleverly as is going to Beijing. But, but to, your, to your question, uh, Rosanna, about, uh, about decoupling, look, we don't want full decoupling. That's not possible. Economic decoupling is not possible. Um, that would, it would cause, you know, vast poverty around the world, and it would, it would greatly increase the risk of a, of a military conflict between China and democratic uh, nations. However, I am strongly supportive of the idea of a selective decoupling to promote um, to promote democratic values, mm. uh, so decoupling from uh, companies that are deeply complicit in China's authoritarian and totalitarian state, and also a decouple, selective decoupling to promote national security interests as, mm. you know, uh, the UK uh, banned Huawei from its, you know, sensitive uh, telecommunications networks. Great idea. Um, and yeah. and I, I also think something we haven't done that we need to is increasingly use selective decoupling to promote human rights. This is something that we have actually done very little of, with the exception of sanctioning some individuals, which is symbolic but has no real world effect. Bethany, Gordon, Ian, thank you very much for your time.